Blammo! Hey, hi everyone! Uh, welcome to Mike and Pat vs. the Galaxy. Uh, I think it's the universe at this point. Episode 1. And uh, so we're playing Stellaris. Um, and I we, we're using Bangs version 1.5, so we're gonna get some fun Banks, shit. not Bangs. It says Banks. I said Banks. You said Bangs, you idiot. I, I, okay, whatever. I don't even care to argue. Uh, but anyways, uh, so we're gonna do a thing where we're basically, we're gonna kind of teach the game a little bit, because I, I hope to do more of this game on, on YouTube, but we're gonna, we're gonna teach the game a little bit, so this is gonna be more of like a tutorial-ish episode. Uh, we're still gonna have some fun giant, uh, space battles, but, um, I, I hope to start it off in something that's kind of like, that will continue. So we're gonna create a species, uh, not the butterfly people. We're gonna create a new one. So we don't want to be these ugly humans. We're gonna be. Uh, let's see, where's where's the most? Uh, Mike, be, be magical fucking space elves. I want to be. Ma I want to be magical fucking space Yoshi's. Here we go. I mean, they do have like those sage robes. I mean, that, that is pretty baller. Yeah, fucking. I don't know. Okay, so they're the name of the race will be, I guess, Yoshi. Oops, I I, I put the randomizer in. Fuck. Hey, Mike, what's an adjective? I'm I'm trying to figure. What is an adjective? <laughs> this game has a lot of, uh, I would go ahead and say, needlessly complicated, like, role-playing mechanics, but it, it all, it all blends in really nice. Uh, so I, you, I made my species, so we're Yoshi, Yoshi's Yoshian. Uh, so then we can pick default names for our people. So I'm gonna have, uh, I guess we're reptilian, so we're gonna pick Zer. Pat, I, my, my race's per pronouns are Zer and Zaz. <laughs> Alright, what what should be the fucking ship prefix? Rail fuck. Rail <laughs> fuck, really? Yeah. I don't know, I, I gotta you Google the word Yoshi to see if there's anything funny we can use. Rail fuck is pretty funny. Alright, so what we're the kind of race we're gonna be playing, these are gonna be this is gonna be a war like race. Um, you can tell by the face that they're definitely gonna like race, so the, the idea is me and Pat are going to do a clustered player start, so we're going to be basically right next to each other, and we're just going to kill everybody. And that's that's pretty much what we're going to be doing, because war is fun in this. And so that's how that's War gonna... is fun. So I'm debating. So are we... Yeah, I think my people are very st are, are pretty strong. Um, look at those arms, and look at those muscles. I know. They're, they're just bred for war. And we're going to do natural engineer, so we have more engineering output. Uh, there's also intelligent, which gives a bit of a bonus to everything, which also wouldn't be so bad, but that's also has a higher cost. I don't know, maybe, maybe I will do intelligence, actually. Maybe, maybe you should go through all of these and show off why you would want to get any of that. Well, I mean, you get food, energy credits. I mean, the thing is, nobody knows what they're really for for the moment. No, um, okay, you know what? Fair enough, Mike. There's a lot in this game. Maybe we should take it slow. I'm actually going to go get more mineral bonus as well as uh, physics, society, and engineering output. But, so, there, we have trade points. So basically I have three picks left, but I have negative two points. So I have to make sure it's above zero, zero or above. So... You gotta get those negative trades. Yeah. So, um, I can change things like habitability. Uh, habitability is a stat that uh, determines how much you can grow on planets and what planets you can even settle on to begin with. So that's not a good one for me to change. Um, we can also do our leaders, how much experience they get, uh, their skill levels, how good they are at their jobs, because we have like scientist leaders and governors and things like that. It's a it's a four X game. <clears throat> um, we can also determine how weak or strong they are. So we're gonna make sure we're gonna say they're good. They're gonna be sedentary. This is like a very safe one to do, because they don't migrate or resettle as much. But that doesn't matter to us because um, we're not gonna expand all that much. Um, I mean, that's a big deal for Pat. Uh, Pat's playing Maybe. a Pat's playing a hive mind, but we'll get into that. Um, I figured I'd do something very simple uh, to start us off with. And what we're gonna do we're gonna be repugnant, which means other uh, other species hate us. Look how fucking ugly this this race is. Holy shit! I don't even want to look at them. All right. I just want to say that if a seven foot tall Yoshi looking lizard <laughs> like that walked up to me, I'd literally shit my pants. Because of how repugnant it was. Well, no, the fact that it's a fucking seven foot tall, apparently super strong, ugly lizard. I like I, I, mean, I could choose. Terrifying. I could choose the name. Oh, Zur, Zur, I like that one. So this is gonna be Ruler Zur. Uh, no, no, it has to be green. Yoshi's are always green. 
I kind of remember we're going to be in. Uh, that, looks, that looks kind of tactical. Room number nine. Do you like room number nine, Pat? What, what the fuck is room number nine? It's the best room. <clears throat> I, I, don't, I don't get it. I gotta Google this. No, it's room number nine of the fucking the tropical world that we're in. It just changed the background. That's all it did. You didn't need to Google anything. I thought room number nine might be a joke. No. Well, maybe it was, but whatever. All right. So next important thing, we have our home world. So the preference of planet kind of matters. Uh, so basically, there's these three categories. There's dry, wet, frozen. And so I'm, we're, I'm making sure not to do the same thing as Pat so we don't have this compatibility issue. <clears throat> but um, we're going to say we're going to like tropical planets. And that means that we can easily go onto continental worlds or ocean worlds. But frozen planets like these tundra ones uh, and the desert worlds are not very compatible with us. Um, so Pat's doing frozen, I think. That's what he said he's going to do. Yeah. <clears throat> it makes it easier to divide up the spoils, essentially. Oh, uh, what kind of <clears throat> sorry, what should be what should be the home world name? Fucking Yoshi's Island. Yes, that's perfect. I, I feel like the gra this is not grammatically correct. I Yoshi's IES Island. I there's no E in Island Mike. It's no, I Yoshi's. Yoshi's. IES. Plural yeah, Yoshi. Yoshi would just be Yoshi, comma, S. Ah, I guess so. Fuck, man. Pat the English teacher coming in. And star name. What will be the fucking star name? I don't know. The Yoshi cluster. Actually, Railgun, Railgun, Railgunia. That's what it's going to be, actually. Fuck that. Not even being an English teacher. They literally had a game called Yoshi's Island. Fucking English teacher. In it. Get out of here. All right. We're going to have Reptilian City. That really doesn't matter. We're just doing all the naming stuff. All right. <clears throat> now to interesting stuff. Now really interesting stuff. Ethics. Uh, so what do we want to be? Um, I'll kind of go through each one. I'll just roughly tell you what it is. So pacifist is, means you don't want to do war. Obviously, it's hard for you, harder for you to do wars. Even fanatic pacifist, you can't even do... You can't even go to war with people. You can, only yeah, you, can only, you can only have war waged on you. The orange ones are much more severe. Yes. Yeah, they're a much more severe variant of it. Um, xenophile means you like, uh, you're like you basically Sweden. You love refugees. and <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you love other people kind of a thing, other races and stuff. You have trust growth. Um, uh, they're basically like they, they don't allow for interference with natives. And uh, they love other people, basically. Uh, basically, if you're beside uh, either xenophile or pacifist, it means they're not going to do anything to you. No, they're going to want to have migration treaties and you know open borders and that kind of thing. So uh, you, we have authoritarian, uh, authoritarian here, which is uh, basically literally Hitler. Um, slave unrest is down and resettlement costs is down. But it's mostly that you can apparently um, they're more okay with slavery, uh, which is uh, uh, which is a thing, by the way. Uh, you you can have space slavery. slavery. Be, space be slavery. specific. This is space slavery. Space slavery, the best kind. And they have a caste system. I was considering to actually do this one for this run, but no. I literally, literally, space India with designated shitting planets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a spiritualist, which is uh, we can uh, research psychic technologies, but they do not like AI uh, because they something about spiritual. Basically, you can. There's things in this game where you can like have robots and then. Uh, you can give the robots a sentience, and this is not against. Uh, this is against what spiritualists will do. Uh, and then this one is militarist, which is reduced war demands and full orbital bombardment, so army damage and fire rate, which is amazing. Um, and then xenophobe, which is that uh, you can enslave aliens, you can purge and displace aliens. Uh, oh, maybe I should have that one, but I, I guess I could just give them to you to eat, eat or whatever. Shh, don't spoil the chicken nuggets, Mike. I'm, I'm actually considering that Xenophore but as well. Um, it really depends. It would give you a lot of border range growth. Yeah, I think I'm going to uh, actually do that. We probably should mention, this game is very similar to like, similar like Civ Five and Endless Legend, and or more like Endless Space than anything else. Which is a good mindset to get in for this game. So the game's kind of louder than you, so let me, I'm going to just try to down on this, my side here. Um... Yeah, it's 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 well. I said it's a four X game, so it's pretty good for that. Um, and so this one in here is egalitarian, which is uh, more like it's utopian kind of thing. You want your people to be super duper happy. They're super and duper democratic. Productive. 
Yeah. So that, that one's kind of neat. Um, and then the last one is Materialist, which is uh, you get lots of research speed bonuses, which is nice. I really like that. Um, and robot maintenance cost goes down. And you can have uh, full AI rights, which is pretty good. But the important thing to note is uh, you can't do the opposites. It kind of just switches to the other one. So there, everything here is basically an opposite. Then you have the one in the middle. The one in the middle is kind of interesting. Uh, this is what Pat's doing. He's going to be a hive mind. So it takes up all your points. You can only be a hive mind. Um, basically, he doesn't have to deal with several mechanics of the game, like happiness um, and things like that. But I also lose. I also lose a lot of the bonuses too. I can't become. I can't have robots. I can't have psychers. It's it's got its ups and downs. But we'll learn more about that later. This is basically Zerg Overmind shit right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking fantastic. Um, yeah, so he's gonna be doing that one. So it's it's fun, but it has its downsides. Mostly like influence is a problem and some other stuff. But it's a different oh, yeah. game you're playing there, and everybody hates you because you're a high find. Because um, we'll, we'll get to that where you eat, you basically eat everybody, which is friggin' great. Except for except for me, obviously Pat's not gonna eat me because we're friends. Maybe I'm repugnant, Pat. <laughs> Anyways, I'm choosing Spiritualist, Militarist, and Xenophobe. A nice mix of uh, some fucking fanatic purging of the rail... Followers of the railgun, essentially, uh, is what we're going to be going for. And uh, then we choose a government type. I don't think the government type really matters, though. You get a couple of new things here, though. It, it changes the way some of these civics work. Civics are pretty important, though. I'm thinking of being a democracy. But is it a democracy, Pat? I mean, why, why, why wouldn't it be? So the first one I want to take is I want to take fire rate 8% because we're going to be really good at war. Um, and then the next one I'm going to take is... I think there's one I saw that was minerals. You know what? I'm going to say, Mike, remember, you do get civic points later on. Maybe picking yeah. up the fire rate early on is not necessary. Sure it is. Well, it's what it's else about, do I fucking want? I don't, I don't know. I don't know what you get. I thought there was one where it gives you minerals. Ah, oh, here we go. Minerals production. Oh, mining gills. That's the one I wanted. All right. So, what kind of government do we want? Is it democratic? Uh, I'll go something the fuck. Dictatorial. Do we want to have a dictator lord of 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 Yoshi Land? Yoshi Island. I think it's gonna be dictator land. Yoshi's oh. dictatorship. <laughs> it is. Yoshi's Island is You're not a space fucking space Cuba. You're no. Your space North Korea. Space North Korea. All right. <laughs> that works South for me. Korea? I don't know. It's one of the Koreas. All right. So we're followers of the railgun. I was right. It is North Korea. Adjective. Railguns. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna call our our fucking empire named railgun. That's it. And what's what's a nice railgunny kind of looking uh, logo for our people? Ah, uh, it's like the quake symbol almost. Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's the right, right one. Then we have green and what's the other color gonna be? This looks ugly as shit. I think I think people are just gonna go to war with us just because of our ugly logo. I mean, I know that's what I would do. Ah, uh, yeah. There we go. Just orange and green. It literally looks like someone threw up into fucking our flag. Whatever, black and green that that's fine black and green that is literally the best color scheme i've ever heard thank you i know well because we're, we're green rioches and obviously projectile weapons we're not fucking plebs and the ftl travel type i was actually debating here um oh i should also mention i guess the uh, projectile types so the difference between them is mostly that missiles are can be intercepted projectiles cannot Energy and projectile are sort of similar. It, I mean, it's literally in the description says medium close range and uh, projectile weapons shoot through fire. Uh, <coughs> sorry, not shoot through fire, shoot through shields. Um, well, lasers have a longer range. Projectile weapons are shorter range. No, they're not. The energy weapons are shorter range. They are? I thought the laser weapons had a longer range. I don't think so. But one, one of the bigger differences, though, is that energy weapons is... Uh, physics related for in terms of research projectile weapons are engineering related and so are missile weapons they're both engineering which kind of matters when you're getting into kind of the research -y kind of stuff so um yeah so that's it so pat what 
what travel are you what ftl method are you, you doing uh i am doing warp travel all right i'm gonna do hyperspace then just to keep it interesting uh warp is probably the best one for as it literally says new players but we're gonna do hyperspace we're gonna have hyper lanes uh which is kind of neat we have like a little set path to to go upon uh which might be kind of fun to to mess around with and what kind of ships are we gonna do i guess reptilian ships they look like something out of uh uh freelancer Maybe I should call the empire, uh, the empire named Railgunia. Huh? Railgunians. There you go. All right, Railgunia saved successfully. All right, you ready to go, Pat? Let's do this. We've got to be cute for the ultimate to win. Uh, oh yeah, I'll mention we're doing galaxy size medium. You can make it like small or tiny. We're doing medium. We turn off AI starts. I, I advance AI starts. AIs. Yeah, we don't like starting next to some asshole who just basically is like really, really strong. But I could have more AIs in this galaxy. Maybe like twelve, actually. I'll, I'll I'll put in like three more because I remember the last game we played. There actually wasn't a whole lot. I mean, we did EGF, actually. But... Actually, I think that's why. It's because I, I think advanced AI doesn't. It counts as its own thing. Yeah, it does count as its own thing. Okay, no, that's it why. controls how many of the regular AIs yeah, start yeah. with more shit. Yeah, we, oh add. yeah. Okay, you're right. Never mind, whatever. Fuck it. Um, then we have Fallen Empires, which is something we'll learn in the game uh, a little bit later. Uh, we don't normally change much of this else. Pat wants to play on normal, so we're going to let him. Uh, we can restrict FTL methods. So that's basically it. So Pat, uh, ready up. Yeah, I'm a casual. I'm sorry, Mike. I apologize. <laughs> yes, you are. So yeah, we're, we're, I am gonna ex explain the game a little bit on how uh, it works and the strategies around and things like that. Uh, this will probably take a couple of episodes, but it'll be a fair bit of me just kind of pausing and going over that. In, in case you're interested in the game or you just like 4X games, or you just want to see what I do in this game. So in eons before the f first primitive Yoshi communities took shape in the dense jungles of Yoshi's Island, <laughs> our <laughs> civilization has spread and prospered. Technological uh, progress has been swift, but our members as our members, numbers grew, the civilization population became increasingly restless. With their world on the brink of anarchy, the military stepped up in to restore the rule of law. <laughs> <laughs> a a new order military. was established. Yeah, no. To safeguard our nation from all threats, both external and internal. Now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane Network, the finest minds of Real Gunny have to finish development of the, of the first um, hyperdrives. Um, the stars themselves are within our grasp. All right. So, um, here's the first thing about the hyperspace type I have. Um, it can be a little bit of a problem. Um, and I, I'm doing it knowingly that it could be a bit of a problem. So, Pat, where did you start in the universe? I started just a little bit south of the galactic center. Good. Uh, he's over here somewhere. Uh, I'm just, I'm to your right then. So, as I said, me and Pat are purposely just working together just basically to kill the galaxy because it's fun. We did that. We, we've already done most of the game with that and we had a lot of fun doing that. So so all these lines you see, these are hyper lines. I have to travel across them to basically get to different parts. So obviously something like this place over here that I'm showing you with my mouse cursor that yeah, I should record. Um, I'll just zoom in just in case something's fucky with it. Who knows? I didn't actually check that. Um, so going over there, I can't actually make it there easily. So if we do a, uh, some sort of war to anyone to the south of us, it's a problem for me. It's automatically an issue. For Pat, though, Pat doesn't have a problem. He's got warp drives, so he can just go straight over there without any problem. But the advantage of hyperlanes is that they're faster. There's no wind down time. With mine, if I were to go somewhere, I have to wait a week before I can do it again or even move, really. With yours, you don't have that. You can just go boop, boop, boop. And wormhole is just basically direct travel, but you have to have stations set up in order to go, and it's very range limited. Pat can just trap warp around the world, uh, around the galaxy. I can, I can hyper hyper drive around the galaxy, but a wormhole person would not be able to do that, which makes it problem for uh, problematic for. Yeah, the uh, wormholes though have a really large range. Are like it's like instant travel, but it's it's complicated. It's very complicated. Okay. Anyways, uh, let's start with how the game is going to start. So right now we're paused right now. So we're at the year uh, 2000, uh, 2200. Um, so we got some researches to do. And we have one guy with Spark of Genius. That's kind of nice. So you can kind of see our three 
main researchers guys and they have physics society and engineering it uses a card system where you have a bunch of cards and you kind of just pick whatever you want so i'm going to get research speed for that one uh monthly influence and propaganda broadcast that's a good early one to get because influence is a resource that we have and we're getting two so we're literally adding like a third to it or something um i don't know how the logic of that works and the last one here last one here is kind of hard it's either engineering facility or army damage and mineral minerals kind of like minerals though but i'm gonna do it go with engineering facility just because i want to get that early engineering bonus uh for labs um and so i can swap these guys out as i want i have an entire menu here i can even recruit more of them which one of them has spark of genius so i'm gonna actually take that guy and put him in there uh so we just recruited an extra scientist and i put him on the put him on there instead so they all have specializations and so i'm taking the ones with just the raw research speed bonuses because this is like the best for me i don't really care much about society research so i'm not really going to do much with that and that's that's kind of how it works so when it's done i get th three new cards it randomly picks from a pool of things i could possibly have some things are rarer than others that's just kind of how it works it also depends on the scientists you have researching a scientist that has the propensity for genetic research may find more stuff that relies on maybe modifying your people or finding stuff that has to deal with modifying animals or just anything genetic related or psionics or maybe technology. It really depends because each scientist has their own traits. Yeah, I'm just modifying the music levels. All right, we're good. Um, so yeah, Pat's, Pat's right about that. I, I kind of forget about that a lot of the time myself. Uh, so we're done with science-ish, uh, sort of. We have a science vessel here with someone on there. And we're gonna actually make him go survey the system. So he's gonna right now, the home, our home system of Railgunia, he's gonna basically go from planet to planet, making sure that maybe some of these planets have some kind of uh, resources that we can tap into. And I have a construction ship here that will, can build uh, mining stations, research stations, whatever that the guy finds, uh, will make some things out of it. Now, uh, normally what I do is I start making my second spaceship, so I, from the orbital platform, because we have a, we have a space station here, I start making my second science ship basically right away as soon as we get into the game. Uh, and on the surface we actually have a couple of uh, things we can do here as well. Um, so we have um, we have mining, so th th there's another component of the game where you also manage the plants that you have. So we have uh, the planetary administration, we have a uh, mining network, you can see the kind of resources they're harvesting from it. So this guy has like five uh, energy, four um, four minerals things like that so if i collect something else if i start building something on here so i'm going to make a monument here which gives me some unity and if for anyone who's played Civ five that's like the same as uh pol um the policies kind of thing what's the resource for the policies holy it's shit, culture it's purple resource what is it culture culture i just said that no, you didn't okay, whatever you know what it's in the video <laughs> um so i'm gonna start making that building and it means i'm gonna suppress the mining that's on it but that's fine because uh, I kind of care more about food, to be honest, when it comes to these people. This planet I'm on is actually I incredibly small. I actually did not get very good RNG for it. It's actually the smallest I think you can get. How big is that? What's the tile limit on that? Uh, 16. Uh, 16 is the planet size limit. Uh, that's so. not bad. It can go down as far as fucking, like, 6, Mike. Yeah, well, it, you won't start with that, though. That's That's my point. All right, and before we finish off, we have our fleet here. Of, Line uh, 16 three... too, asshole. Yeah, it's small. Um, we have three Corvettes here, and so I, what I like to do is I like to split that fleet up, and then I go and I basically just I set a lot of rally points all around the galaxy. And the reason I do this is because I'm actually trying to explore, and I'm trying to see what places are threatening to me, um, which is an important uh, notion, uh, especially when you're playing... Uh, early on and you don't know where things are. Um, so this will give you a, a general idea of the threats and it means you don't have to lose a science ship to this kind of stuff. So I basically just set up a bunch of rally points and I make them come back home. So then once I know what the threats are, I can just, uh, I can kind of like adequately prepare myself for the eventual like uh, uh, having to deal with it. So there's gonna be some directions where I can't even go because I decided to choose hyperlanes. Um, so yeah, there we go. Alright, uh, I think that's basically all I start with. Actually, there's one other thing I do. So we have, um, so there's a lot of menus here, and we'll get to most of them. So I have my authority, uh, 
uh, election only on ruler on death. Ruler has traits of more minerals and more happiness. So this is a very happy uh, uh, fucking Nazi Germany uh, going on right now. So uh, and oh yeah, he's got an agenda. So he says fleet expansion, which means they also get bonuses to ship upkeep and ship build speeds and things like that, which is excellent. Very very nice. Um, but the thing I was going to talk about was not any of these things. Uh, policies. Uh, we have policies and edicts. So we could do our, our uh, war philosophies, unrestricted wars. We literally do not care. We stockpile minimal food, so up to 200. Um, getting more means you have more of a buffer before um, you, your people starve if that ever happens. We have an... So we have an orbital bombardment uh, policy, and so this changes so I can use full bombardment. So fuck yeah, let's do full uh, bombardment right now. Uh, are we allowed to resettle people? Forcibly resettle them? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, our first contact policy is to be aggressive. Uh, if we set to peaceful, we won't attack people automatically. Uh, slavery is allowed, and yeah. purging is allowed as well. Uh, what is displacement? Oh, it's basically you just fucking send them out. It is now not our responsibility to see the needs of those who would undermine foundations of our society. And the last thing is edicts. So this uh, influence you see per turn, I can put it into something like information quarantine, which is governing ethics attraction plus 25%, which is something we'll get into later. Um, governing three, thro uh, three th uh, free thought, which is uh, increases research speed, but governing eth ethics go down, goes down a bit, and we're going to enable that one because, um, I mean, I'm offsetting it slightly with the fact that I'm I'm a, a psionic, or what's it called? The spiritual. Spiritual people are less likely to have governing uh, governing eth ethics diver divergence kind of thing. But we'll, we'll get into what that is later. And uh, the rest of these just do research improvements at the cost of other research ones, so we don't do that. And that's basically it. Are you done, Pat? Uh, yeah, I've got all my stuff set up, and I'm ready to go. Well, that's the end of the episode, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Holy shit, that was a whole episode? Yeah, it actually fucking was took forever but yes uh next episode we'll actually start the game so yeah take care everyone goodbye